Photoshop. Today we are going to concentrate on making some textures and more importantly some texture maps. I do a lot of this type of uh, a lot of this type of work. I make a lot of backgrounds. So uh, let's get started. Today we're going to make a sort of slaty um, sort of a limestone-ish sort of wall so you can see how these elements come together and how you can make them look pretty real. So uh, right off the bat let's just get started. I have a 600 by 600 document open at 72 dpi and I need to find me some sort of mustard color. I'm looking for some sort of Dijon-ish. That looks like it'll work. Excellent. Now, fill clouds. Render clouds. And as you can see I have black as my background. And when I do that I get this interesting sort of cloud layout. Now we kind of get the highlights to pop a little bit so let's go to artistic plastic wrap and as you can see it's already started to lift some of the highlights and if I turn this on and off you can sort of see that and uh, I only have the highlight strength set to two so um, it's very subtle but it will get the point across pretty quick here so I can hit OK. Now I'm going to go to texture crackalore and this is going to kind of give us our sort of wall look and as you can see it puts all these pits and wormholes in it and whatnot and helps it lift it off the page a bit more and also you can see the highlights are really starting to stand out more with the plastic wrap. Um, I have my crack depth set to 2. First of all, uh, crack spacing it, I have it set in the 80s, the low 80s, whatever you want, but somewhere around there. Uh, depth at 2 and brightness at 5. So I can hit OK on that and as you can see I get that going now. Um, Actually, let me do that one more time because I may want to bring that down just a bit more. Yeah, let's set the let's set the crack depth to one. There we go. Way more subtle, and not as in your face. Because we're going to come back and do it one more time. Same procedure, same filter, and as you can see now, the bumps are really starting to come alive here, and you get a sense of volume and space that it's not just a flat object. I'm going to set my crack depth now to two, and now that really is making quite a difference. It's almost an effect. It is in fact an effect on top of an effect. Uh, there's how it looked before and there's how it looked after. Looks good. Let's keep that. Now, um, looks good for a wall and pretty good texture map and very usable. However, um, I want this to look like they were blocks, not necessarily uh, just a slab wall. So what I've done previously is I've set up a path of uh, what's called a running course or a uh, a subway course bond of stone and these are the grout lines right here. So uh, let's lay out some grout lines. I'm going to make a new layer up here and I'm going to pick a little bit lighter color because I really want these things to stand out. And maybe right there. Okay, now let's set the brush up because we are going to paint these on and I'm going to set my brush to just so I can see it when I set it up to 16 and if you look down at my brush engine here you can see I got this kind of Waverly line. Let me turn these off real quick. So I started with just a solid standard brush, standard hard edge brush and I cranked up my size jitter to 100. I got my um, I got my diameter set pretty low. I think it's at 10, 12, somewhere around there and I got my scattering set at somewhere in the low 20s. I can keep going but you can see it gets pretty wild. So I just want this line to be sort of bumpy. I want it to look like rough concrete or rough mortar and that seems to be pretty good. Right, I got about 20. That'll work. Alright, so brush presets. Let's get back down. I'm going to use this brush as a size 5. Back to my pass. And there they are. You can see them. It's a running bond. Um, so let's paint with these. I'm going to stroke these path lines and there's a couple ways to do it. You can do it on the fly out here, stroke path, or you can control click and also get the stroke path. And I'm going to pick what tool to use. You can pick as many tools as you want or whatever they have here. I'm going to use brush and I'm going to use simulate pressure which will simulate this that we had set up previously. And I'm going to hit OK and it will stroke, it'll stroke the lines and there you go stroked. Now, not convincing yet because of, I'm going to turn off those paths real quick, not too convincing yet but it's hard, it's in the right place. In fact that color may be a little bit too light. Let's crank that back just a smidge and fill. Let's see how that looks. A little bit better. Uh, nevertheless, let's keep going here. We have to do a bevel in 
boss and uh, I'm just going to use a standard bevel emboss right now because I just want to see what it looks like and uh, it looks like it's sitting on top of the brick it doesn't look like it's it's been flush mounted or indented so the thing we have to do first is uh, we have to change the light direction and I'm going to turn off global light and push it down here and now you can kind of see that there is a shadow line and it falls more to the inside of the brick and it looks like the blocks are standing proud. The other thing I'm going to do is drop a very small drop shadow. Now I know it doesn't sound right that I'm dropping that but I need to sort of flush out, darken the edges of these blocks and I'm actually going to use like a 2. And maybe that's good. Bevel, I'm going to crank the depth up a little bit more so the edges are just a little bit more well defined looking good just fix that all right there we go and that is uh, our grout lines not too bad although I'm gonna crank out just a little bit more I want to get a little bit more line there we go and there's our grout line and I may actually just bump that or pass that layer down just a smidge now the cool thing about this is if you go back to your brush tool you can start zoom in, let me zoom out a little you can use this brush tool to sort of enhance your edges and clean up these corners make that a little bit smaller and if you go through this if you go through over here you can start defining these corners a little bit better so they're not so rounded and you don't have to do it with everyone but make that brush size a little bit bigger you can see now you can start sort of fine-tuning your piece and make it look good and I missed a line there and you could also go back over this got that there and sort of fine-tune these mortar joints it's a little abrasive but you get the point and uh, make this become your own piece let's just say this piece really took a chunk out and there you go so you have sort of this photorealistic wall that's not so bad it's a little aggressive fix that and looks good you can also erase I think I'm going to just erase that piece right there and erase that piece right there awesome one last thing we can do is also we can sort of crack the bricks or put a crack through them and I'm going to make a new layer to do that and I'm going to fill this layer with black uh, command delete gets me my back color and I am also just on this layer I'm just going to apply a default bevel emboss uh, nothing special yet and as you can see the bevel emboss is applied you can sort of see it on the top here and on the left side and you can see where the lights coming from but I'm not really interested in the black I'm interested in the effect so and I can have my cake and eat it too and that way I'm gonna crank the fill down to nothing so the colors there even though the layer is still there the effect is still there I just don't have to deal with the color anymore and still you can see the bevel emboss at the top and the left side of the image here and what and even the bottom come to think of it so I'm gonna blow that up just a little bit oversize it for the document now what's the big deal the big deal is I can now take an eraser brush and let's just use that stock one for now and at five pixels and if I run it over here you can see that I get this kind of interesting effect I'm still seeing the effects of the bevel emboss but I'm not seeing the fill which is kind of cool because now I can do some interesting things with this. I'm going to set my go back to my brush engine with the erase tool selected. Go back to the brush engine and re and reselect that scatter. So you can kind of see what it looks like. It's not it's not a straight line. In fact, when I paint with it, you can see it's it's kind of jaggedy. The other thing I'm going to do is I need to I'm just going to paint a temporary line here. I need to sort of fine tune the bevel emboss and we're going to go with a hard chisel whoa that was loud maybe we're not we're gonna go with the soft chisel no we're not we're gonna go with the smooth how about that there you go now you can see what's going on there and I have my size at around five and my depth is pretty good there at 161 150 ish and now you can sort of see so when I go ahead and paint with this brush you can see this interesting crack and I'm just gonna follow this up the building and we're gonna assume and maybe it steps over a bit from the joint 
and goes off and maybe it breaks away here and goes to the joint and uh, if I want to if I want to bring that back I can just grab my brush and paint over that line and infill again and you see you get this interesting effect so uh, masonry wall a couple filters and three layers and you are good to go hey thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll talk to you later